What's up, Steve? Hey, Jeffrey. Man, I got a problem you just wouldn't believe here, but I'll tell you what, I know you're the guy to fix it. Got a 2005 Jeep Wrangler here, inline six. I got a starter problem, and man, there just isn't any room to work on this thing. And I'm trying to get this starter in here, and I'm having trouble out the wazoo. What, what happened to your Jeep here that started all this? I went start up and click, 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 clack. So I thought, well, it's got to be the starter. May not be the starter, so I might be replacing the starter for no reason. Hey, did you have the starter tested at the any auto parts place? Yes, I did. And they, what well, you know, what they told me, they said your starter's testing good, but it's slow. And do you know how old your battery is here? This battery was a refurbished battery, so it's probably two years old at least. I noticed there's no date code stamped on it. You've got the starter in place. Yep. I see there's a power wire that's not hooked up and I also see a, a wire with a clip down there. It, is the starter completely bolted on? No, not yet. Well, we need to get the starter bolted on. Yep. And what else you got? Well, just getting the starter bolted on and getting everything wired back up to the battery and then we'll uh, go from there since we probably already know that the battery is bad, but the battery tested well, that's what's strange. Wait, you took the battery to a place and they tested it? I tested it with a voltmeter. You tested it with a voltmeter. What'd you get on a voltmeter? 12.46. That would imply, based on voltage, it was good, right? Yeah. yeah. But there's one problem. A battery can show 12.46 and you can have cells that's messed up and it causes the amount of amperage okay, that now, it can produce this, to be uh, bad. Now we put uh, my car over here and with the jumper cables on it. Okay, And uh, hang and on, we got someone else. Introduce yourself. I'm John. Hi, John. I, I'm, I'm Steve's uh, uh, stepdad. Okay, yeah. all right. All right, so you guys hooked up jumper cables? Yeah. And it still didn't fire off? It didn't, it didn't fire off, it just click, 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 click. I brought a bag of goodies over here that we're gonna work with. Okay. I've got uh, your typical. I've got the light. I've got a voltmeter. Yeah, that we've got everything. We're gonna use the voltmeter. Okay. We're gonna check that, but there can be other problems. Last but not least, we brought a little jump starter. All right. Okay. Okay. And I and I see that. I see you have some tools here. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna test it. Yep. Are see you, what you ready? Got. Yeah. See what All you right, got. Let's see what we got here. You have twelve point eight volts, which that looks really good. I'll wire up your starter and go from there. All right. All right, so here we go. Now, how the fuck is it? This is going to be long winded. <laughs> if you got this down way up there, well, you couldn't get this, Steve. So we got two bolts, and then we got to hook up this uh, power wire. Yeah. I'm not sure what size that is. Probably a 13 millimeter or 14 millimeter on the, on the, top. On the solenoid. You did the right thing by having your battery completely determed, and that way, no matter what, you can't short anything out. So that's really good. Exactly. Well, Jeffrey, what mistakes did I make here, and that you could help people out in and watching this video? Uh, I think the most common mistake is people check for voltage on a battery, and yet the problem is a battery can show good voltage and actually be bad because it has to have an official load test. And usually auto parts stores or battery stores will have a load test. Like O'Reilly's, AutoZone, Napa, all those places will hook up a load tester to your battery and they'll actually do a live test. Walmart even does a load test for you. Now for somebody doing this job, uh, what advice would you give them? What tools uh, would you advise that they have? I mean, it looks like a set like you have is just fine. You have everything you need. Just a lot of patience. Yeah. Yeah, well. 
Uh, always test your battery first because they don't charge anything to test the battery. It's free. All free. All right, let's see what size this is. Okay, so that's like a 14 or something of that right around there. I'm just torquing this down now. That's 13. That's a 13? Okay. Absolutely. This guy can do anything. So we got to remove this right here. And this is your power wire from your battery. Mm -hmm. And then it's got a lock nut right here behind it. So we got to put that okay. like that. Put the lock They're nut back out. on but... and then put the, the bolt back on. Now this is where if you make the mistake of not unhooking your battery, yeah, if you good. did yeah. this and touch your exhaust yeah. or your engine, yeah. you're going to have a sparky adventure. But the battery's unhooked, so we don't have to worry about it. I'll tell you a story about me and this guy once. We were up, uh, hooked me up there with him one day back in my way early days. Hook up the solenoid. And uh, we were sitting there, and he said, give it a turn this way. I said, okay. Turned it that way, 100%. But I want to tell you what, this guy here has taught me everything that I would ever need to know about anything. Now, now Jeffrey, let me ask you something. Uh, now, on that solenoid, does it have to kick in real fast uh, in order for that solenoid to be, that started to be good? Or does it, if it kicks in real slow, then what? Uh, if it, it like should. the solenoid goes like this, real slow, and then instead of going like that. It should be fast. Yeah, that's, what, that's where they proved that it was wrong, that the starter was bad. Oh, okay, that's the Bendex. Yeah. So you have your starter and you have your Bendex. Yeah. The Bendex is what shoots it. Yeah, that's right. Now yeah, that's, if, that if that was, was getting stuck. That was slow. That's what they slow. say was stuck. Oh. Yeah. Well, maybe it's tested. not your battery if that's the case. Yeah, that, that's it. That, Which I wish I had that on video because that was important information right there. Yeah. <laughs> that, that I oh, did it, it was. <laughs> it was on video, but. Yeah. We've got the starter hooked up to the block. We've got the solenoid hooked up and we've got the solenoid uh, electric from the ignition switch hooked up. Okay. Now it's time for us to hook up the battery. The battery. Now this one I notice has a little bit, it's kind of over clamped. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, Steve, go ahead and get in there and See if you can fire it off. Whenever we're ready. You're okay. ready. Go ahead and try it. All right, we have to tighten this I positive. I got him one of those for Christmas and I got me one. All right, that was 10 millimeter. Now we need a 12 millimeter for this one. And this is the negative, so if you touch anything with a negative, it's okay because you're not going to short anything out. Yeah. All right, Steve, last but not least, let's get the voltmeter and let's check and see what your alternator is putting back into the battery. That by placing the red on the positive black on the negative and we'll see what we're reading. What are we reading, Jeffrey? 14.7. Looks good. Okay. Now what's that tell us, Jeffrey? It's charging. And that's what we want, right? That's exactly what you want. I think patience is a virtue. Keep the tools close to you so you're not climbing in and out of them. That's right. I generally uh, do that. Keep your tools close. Keep them put up. 
and keep them lubricated so they don't rust. That's what I generally do. With my this is the 13, and it's a 3 8 dry. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. The great thing about these cases, yeah. you can take one look and you can see yeah. all the tools are there. Uh, yeah. Okay. And so pretty much you're ready to wrap it up. Yeah, but right. before we wrap it up completely, let's do one last thing. If you have any water on there, put a little WD-40 on. Yeah. That's right. It'll keep them from rusting. Yeah. Amen. I know that too. Yeah. All right. Go for a restart. All right. Very good. You, you, you bought the right starter and you got it done. Yep. yep. That's it. That's it. Jeffrey, once again, I owe you. Nope. All for Riley's to uh, to uh, uh, see if the starter was bad, and then we turn around and we ask them to give it a uh, uh, try, a test it, and they tested it, and they said that the uh, uh, spring was kicking out real slow. But they said the starter was good. And they said the starter was good, but it was. It, but the thing was, they showed positive, but but the thing that was uh, uh, kicking out real slow. It said sh it should kick out faster. So that would indicate a Bendex problem yes. in most situations. Yes. So it just wasn't kicking out. It wasn't kicking out. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and seeing how you couldn't get a uh, Bendix for that starter, then you had to buy the whole starter. Okay. So always test your battery first, but then your starter. Normally, when you have one, just click. First thing, just have them check the battery. Yeah. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and then if then. it's not the battery, if the battery test good, then yeah. check the okay. alternator. All right. Very good, guys. All right. Thank you. We thank you, Jeffrey Kraft. Yeah. You are a fine gentleman, yeah. and I'll tell Certainly you what, are. one heck of a mechanic. This guy can show you oh. anything, and I would recommend watching and I'll let his you play YouTube my, video i let you play my uh, Les Paul guitar next time you show up. Sounds good. <laughs> we love Les Pauls. Hey. Music is life. That's right. You know it. See? She's ready to go. Hear that? Purrs like a kitten. Another successful Jeffrey Craft YouTube video and another successful, satisfied friend of Jeffrey. Jeffrey can help you out. Anytime you need some help, come to Jeffrey. He's your answer guy. He knows it all. Thank you, Jeffrey.